Hi, uh, my name is Pawan Oberoi. I'm the CEO of a company in the Bay, California Bay Area called Epiphany. And we are the people who are behind the product called whiteboard.chat, which I'm going to talk to you about today. Awesome. How are you doing this this evening? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for asking, Gabriel. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm excited because this is actually my first podcast that I've recorded with video. And I'm, this is going to be posted on YouTube after it drops. And it's the first time that my guest and myself are actually going to break bread together virtually. So you had this great idea if you want to tell the listeners as to what we made. Yes, yeah, sure. So uh, Gabriel was... When we did an introduction call, Gabriel told me that um, he really likes to cook. So I said, okay, uh, let's try and make some Indian food together because I, I'm originally from India. Right? And one of the things I really like is called chicken tikka masala. And um, so that's, where, that's what we made, chicken tikka masala and rice. Yes. Uh, Yes. And actually, this is like you mentioned earlier, this is my first attempt at cooking Indian food. I've had it many times. It is by far one of the most flavorful cuisines ever. Um, and I'm I'm very excited about my tikka masala. How about you? Yeah, I'm super excited too. The thing I, it, my wife, she's from Taiwan, right? She tells me that it takes a lot of effort to make Indian food. And at the end, the outcome is so small, right? Like you take like a few hours and then you end up with a small amount of food. Versus if you look at any other cuisine, you just boil pasta and you have a pot full of pasta. Right? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, the amount of spices that went into this is is great, man. I, I like, my kids are like, what is that? I was like, oh, you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> They're out there in the in the kitchen, probably uh, chowing down on it myself. So I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show off mine. Uh -huh. I've got mine right here for the camera. I've got some. I didn't have basmati rice because uh -huh. um, we have like a 50 pound bag of um, your regular long grain rice. So I was not gonna go out and buy rice if we have 48 pounds of it laying around. Uh, I don't know if you want to show yours, man. Yeah, sure. So mine is not as fancy as. Cables, but there you go. <laughs> I, I I also don't have basmati rice, right? So it's regular long grain rice too. Whatever <laughs> works, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, why don't you t give us a little bit of background uh, uh, on what you do? All right. So, um, I'm a techie by trade. Um, I'm a software engineer. I've done a couple of startups in my career. We started this latest one, the latest company called Epiphany in December of 2019. And soon after we started, uh, COVID hit, right? COVID-19, <laughs> it was not a good time to start a new company. Uh, so we saw um, our kids were struggling with remote learning. Right? So we saw that they were having a hard time getting engagement with their teachers. Uh, so we created this thing called whiteboard.chat. Pulled um, parts of the product that we, we were making in our startup, and we created whiteboard.chat. And since then, it has uh, we introduced it in I think August of last year to the rest of the world. And since then, it has taken off. Right, so uh, there's a whole bunch of pioneer teachers who have helped us, guided us. Right, they tell us what to do. There's this Facebook group that we are all part of. They communicate with each other. They communicate with us. And they guide us uh, how to, um, what parts of educational technology they like and what part should they should we add into our product. And since then, it's been a really awesome ride for us. We just keep adding new features every week, every, almost every day. And... Teachers use it, they test it, the kids' engagement is going through the roof. And it's not only, it's, it's used all around the world. The product is used everywhere around the world except Iceland. Uh, I don't know we, why we haven't been able to crack Iceland, but every other country we have had uh, students and teachers using it. That's funny that you said we haven't been able to crack Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I came across your product probably a couple of weeks ago from a colleague of mine. And then that's how you and I kind of ended up uh, getting in communication and, and getting this, this backend chat going. So um, we're going to talk about 
whiteboard chat. And more importantly, you're going to kind of take us through it as well. But I think before we do that, um, I think we need to take a bite of our food. How do you feel? I think so too. It's a lot right. of effort, so we should try and see what it tastes like. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go Got for it. the chicken. Yeah, chicken. I, I like that 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 sauce right over the rice like that. Mm. Ah, it's really good. The the it's just when I when my wife was testing it and you know we were testing it for salt. She said, that is a lot of flavor. Like there's a lot of flavor in there. I told her that's that's Indian cooking. It's like every spice you can imagine in the world, more than likely has roots in India. Yeah, I I think there is a theory behind it. At least I have a theory behind the spiciness of Indian cuisine and especially hot places. I think maybe in the old times before refrigeration, food used to rot very easily, right? So maybe they used to add a lot of spices to prevent it from rotting or even from people tasting food as if if, if it was rotten or not, right? That's my theory behind uh, spiciness of hot areas. Wow. Um, and did you guys make this at home? Yeah, we did. <laughs> what kind of chilies do you use when you when you make it? Uh, so I also use prepackaged garam masala. I'm not going to make it on my own, right? We use um, like my my kids and my wife don't like spicy food, so we use basic stuff. We use a uh, little bit of garam masala. We use uh, garlic, ginger. We grind that, right? We use uh, mm, dhania powder. What is that? That is uh, coriander uh, powdered coriander. Right. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. A little bit of red chili, very little. Uh, okay. That's exactly what I use. The uh, I use, I think they're called the California Reds. They look like red jalapenos. Mm-hmm. I put two of those and made that, that paste. And for those of you watching or listening and your mouth is watering, when this episode drops, I will also drop a YouTube video of the, of this recipe. That way you can taste it for yourself. So without... Without further ado, man. All right, so take us through this uh, this whiteboard. Um, so you kind of mentioned how it came to be. You know, this pandemic hit. Our students were not as engaged as we wanted them to be. So you guys created this because you obviously saw a need. Now, before we get into you showing the product off, what platforms does it work with? If you don't mind us, you answer yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so it um, the pla- whiteboard.chat is a browser-based platform. So it works on all different devices. People use it with Chromebooks. They use it with iPads. They use it with PCs, with Macs, even um, certain parts of the world where they don't have access to computers. They even use it with smartphones. Right? And so it uses all across a varied set of devices. Okay, and um, it's basically an open whiteboard, right? It is. A, you, it's a. It started off with like an i whiteboard, but is no longer a whiteboard. Uh, you'll see the amount of stuff we have added to it. But it's you don't need an account. Uh, students never need an account. It's free. We are never going to charge educators for this uh, product ever, right? Um, we are just building it such that, especially during this time, we can be a little more helpful to the rest of the world. And and that's a good thing about technology, right? It's a little effort on our part. Like we put in 30 minutes of effort, but that is magnified by technology a thousand fold, right? And it helps thousands of teachers and students save time as well as uh, engage better with each other. Absolutely. And you don't have to wait for this product to be packaged, to be shipped, uh, to tell people about it. It just spreads like wildfire because we're all on the age of the internet and, you know, word travels pretty pa- pretty fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hand it to you. And if you want to go ahead and take sure. us to the whiteboard and while you do that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a little bit more food. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. Okay. So let me start. Um, where did it go? All right. You can see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, good. 
All right. So, like I said, uh, this is a browser-based platform. We are right now in our winter mode. That's why you see snow. Um, student privacy is super important to us. So, there's a link on the bottom left which talks about super, uh, student privacy. We are COPPA compliant. We have signed multiple agreements with different school districts around the world uh, that have more stringent requirements. The the whiteboard.chat works in two modes, right? You hit the start drawing button. You can see there is a collaboration mode, which is just like a regular whiteboard, right? Where everybody ends up on the same board. They can collaborate with each other. They can see each other's mouse. Uh, they can work together, but they can also erase each other's stuff. They can um, delete what the teacher has put there and so forth. So primarily what we are going to talk about is this teaching mode, which is the other, other button, start teaching, where you can create, assign, and live teach individual student boards, right? So you can also put students in groups, which I'll fairly uh, quickly show you, but that's the mode we're going to talk about. So you just click this button, start teaching, and you're in. The teacher doesn't need an account to sign up. You don't even need an email address to give us, and you can start using it right away. Um, if you want to save your work, though, as a teacher, you do need an account because that's how we associate the board with you. And you can sign in with Google or Facebook. That was that was my next question. Do you sign in with Google? You have that authentication token. That is one less password and username for you teachers that have to figure out. That's right. So, and it's uh, as soon as you get in, you can start using it. So you can start drawing on the board, just like a whiteboard. You can type anywhere on the board as well, right? So I just use, put my mouse somewhere and start typing. So you don't have to look around for um, text input boxes, none of that stuff. You can type anywhere on the screen as well. Right? And <clears throat> it's super easy. You can erase uh, by right, clicking and dragging or using the eraser from the toolbar. Uh, on the bottom right-hand side, you can see that there is, you can change colors also of your pen. So as soon as you change the color of your pen, the whole interface changes. Some, mm -hmm. <laughs> some teachers love that, some teachers hate it. So there is an option you can uh, turn it on or, on or off where you can have the whole thing change on you or not, right? But kids love it. Um, so the way uh, we test this product is on my own kids, right? So me or my wife makes uh, these boards and gives it off to the kids. They run it on it uh, and they test it out themselves. And they take like 20 minutes to pick the right color for what they want to do for any activity. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how us educators, yeah, we have our, uh, you know, I have my kids accounts on my computer as well. That way, if I need to test something, I'll log in as them or I'll have them do it. So our poor kids, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one of, one, of my, uh, one of our pioneer teachers today, she was asking on our Facebook group, how can we save these colors? Because they say that they love that they can have these millions of colors with whiteboard.chat, but they can never get the right shade back, right? So the colors are really important to educators. So. And so you can change the size on the sliders here. You can change the size of the brush. You can change the font, uh, all of that stuff, right? But I'll show you some cool stuff. You can change into a highlighter from here as well. So uh, on the left-hand side here, you see a toolbar, which has a whole bunch of tools. I'll show you some of those. The um, basic one, which most people use to prepare for a lesson is to upload a file, right? So you can just upload a file from your computer or from the Google Drive. Oh. Right. right. So you can upload a file. Let's say I have a, a PDF that I want to upload. The PDF has three pages, right? So I just find that file, I upload it, and whiteboard.chat automatically puts that PDF. So this is page number one, right, of the PDF. And if you go to the page number two on the whiteboard.chat, you'll see the second page. So for each page in the PDF, it creates a page in whiteboard.chat, right? And you can start annotating on it. You can start drawing on it. You can do, you can move it around. You can resize it if you want to. You can prepare for your lesson very easily, right? You can take pictures of your textbook, uh, put them there and that's it. You're ready to go for your lesson, right? Yeah, so 
I know you probably want to take another bite of your food, so I'll do a little talking right now. That way, <laughs> so a couple of ideas that popped out to me are a lot of our textbooks are online. There, uh, you know, at least in my district, we have something called Launchpad, where uh, the district has compiled basically a bank of for us to actually start um, getting our internal documents, our internal things, our internal resources that are paid for by the district, um, and a lot of our, te- actually all the textbooks that are available to you are in that. And a lot of them have that PDF feature where you, I mean, gone are the days where you receive an actual physical, a physical teacher resource, a, feature, a physical teacher book. So now they're all PDF. So I could just grab, go to my launch pad, grab the documents, the worksheets, the homework, the teach pieces, throw them in there. And I love that it's literally one page per document in that document. So instead of compiling all three pages on one, it's nice and neat. And it looks to me, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks to me like every single one of those pages is nothing more than an object, right? That I can resize. Can I lock it in place? That way I can't accidentally move it. Yes, you can lock any of the objects. You can right click it. You can say lock this objects. Uh, so you cannot accidentally move it or erase it. So it'll stay where it is uh, forever. Right? You can, um, yeah. Wow. Wow. All right. So you can upload things directly from your computer. You can upload them from hard drives, flash drives, and Google Drive. Wow. What's some of the other things that we can do once we have some content on here? So let's invite some students. So what I'm going to do is invite, uh, let me hang on for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. I'm going to move this stream cast thing on the other screen so that I don't have to keep monkeying with it. Okay, there you go. So if I need to mute, uh, <laughs> I can mute easily. No uh, let let me tell you one thing though: eating Indian food and working on a keyboard don't go well together. So <laughs> I don't recommend that. <laughs> when I was showing mine to the camera, a, a little bit of the sauce almost fell on my keyboard, so I took it back real quick, and I made sure that's the spot that I ate first. <laughs> almost, I actually spilled some on my keyboard. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, so. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to invite students. The way okay. to invite students is to click this right hand button that says invite. You can use the QR code to invite students if they have mobile devices. They can just scan it with their cameras. You can give, read out a easy to read class code. Or what most teachers do is use this link at the bottom and copy it and they put it in their LMS, right? Or they put it in their Bitemoji classroom where the students can click. And as soon as the students click it, it will generate a cop uh, a board for them. Okay. So right. what I'll do is I'm going to invite you so you can be a pretend student and I'm going to open another browser window on the side in cog- incognito mode so the viewers can see it as well. Okay. Looks like I'm in your um, whiteboard. And interesting, my whiteboard color is different from yours, so it's individual to the user. That's right. So when the students join for the first time, they'll be asked for their name, right? And they can enter their name they're in, and they get a copy of this whiteboard. So whatever, and they can start using it immediately, right? So they can start typing anywhere. They can start drawing anywhere. And this is a cool part that I, as a teacher, can watch everybody in real time, right? You can see, click this grid view. You can change the size of the grid depending on how many students you have. You can see Gabriel and this student are here and they're doing their work, right? And it shows you in real time as the students are progressing through their lesson, where they're struggling, where they're doing well. Even if they go to the next page, this thing updates. So it's almost like as if there is a camera on top of each kid's shoulder that you can see the whole class in real time as they're working through the lesson, right? Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty impressive. So on the bottom left-hand corner is where I have my navigation. So I'm going to go to page two now. Okay. And I'm going to just put some text in here. And I can move my text box around. Okay. And another neat thing is that as a teacher, you can join a student's board. 
So you can hop on to the student board really easily and work with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You can say, hey, that was a good job, right? So uh -huh. you can give them, and then you can give them stickers if you want to, right? So you have, now right now we just put Valentine's Day stickers as well. But we have reward stickers, I'll give Gabriel a cake, right? So. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So I'm processing all this right now. We talk, we talk a lot about being in the power zone with teachers being, instead of being in front of the class, being immersed in the class with them. And I can imagine the things that a teacher can do and the things that a teacher will no longer have to do because of whiteboard chat. So I can literally, I can drop my in-class worksheet or my check for understanding make a copy for each student through the share feature like you did here students can work on it and i can literally walk around the class or be in the back or work with the student individually or with a small group and check my computer and go through everyone's whiteboard to make sure things things look good and if i need to intervene and maybe uh helps uh, help a student out i can do that on the fly that's I don't right. need to be there. I could do this virtually. That's absolutely right. right? Some other teachers have told us that um, after they started using whiteboard.chat, they started to enjoy teaching again. Right? And remote learning took that away from them, but they started to enjoy it once more, which means a lot to us. Right? That it means uh, this thing is working or is, is doing something valuable to the society as a whole. Yeah. And, you know, we use the word virtual learning, distance learning, remote learning, whatever you want to call it, but it's, that's not what it is. I mean, when this pandemic hit, nobody was ready for it. No districts were ready. This was literally emergency learning. So we were literally trying to figure things out, but this is, um, this is a game changer. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So let me show you some more cool stuff. So that's the, Basics, right? Like with the basic basics, which you can use to do your basic lessons. Um, there's a whole bunch of tools in this tools menu here. You open it, you can draw basic shapes, circles, uh, rectangles, arrows. You can do, you can crop your PDF. You can select portions of the PDF, right? Uh, right inside the tool. Uh, you have, we have different color post-it notes. So you can use post-it notes for activities as well. We have a rich text editor. We have the ability to have an infinite cloner, right? We have um, math the ability. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna. I just saw math symbols. I will show you that. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. So, um, so for math teachers, love it. We can add links to external websites. You can embed. YouTube videos inside whiteboard.chat. So we, you can say, I want this video to play from uh, time 30 seconds to time 50 seconds, and it cuts out the ads. It just plays that portion of the video for you. We have a math editor built in, which is super interesting. You can do really complex equations. You can do trigonometry. You can do integration. You can do fractions. You can do... Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with it, right? So, and you can keep typing math equations with it. Wow. <clears throat> you say that that's math, right? Yes. Why are there letters in there? That's what I don't get. Oh, math okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, I have uh, forgotten all my maths. I'm learning again. <laughs> yeah, I have two kids and I'm literally having to relearn everything all over again. Yeah, there's a there's a whole bunch of documentation that you'll find on our website too, like on our uh, help page. You can do quadratic equations, polynomials. You can do fractions, summations, a whole bunch of stuff with the math editor. <clears throat> so those of you who are listening to this podcast through a podcast player and not watching the video, I highly suggest you click in the show notes for this podcast episode and click on the link. For this YouTube video, or you can always do a search in YouTube for EdTech Bytes because this video, I mean, 
it's one thing to hear it, but it's another thing to see it. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, but yeah, keep going. Keep going. I'm, I'm intrigued. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So then there are more and more stuff. Like all of these features, we have added over 100 new features in the last, I think, three months or four months uh, based on teachers' feedback. All of these are coming from teachers, right? So there's a built-in compass. You can do uh, constructions with the compass. There's a really cool snake pointer if you want to catch kids' attention. There's a snake pointer that shows up on their screen, right? Uh, uh, there is also a spotlight pointer if you don't want a snake, right? <laughs> if you just want to highlight something. Kids love this too much, right? So the teacher said, take it out, give us a simpler one. <laughs> uh, the, there's a student signal. This, is, this came from some teachers in Malaysia. Right? So, for example, if you want to understand how well the kids are understanding the lesson, right? so you can put a spotlight as a teacher on the board and the kids on their board, right? they can just go to page number four. So, if you go to page number four, you'll see the spotlight right? and the kids can just click, hey, I'm really understanding this lesson really well. So, I'm green. I cannot understand it or I'm having trouble. right? And you as a teacher can see from the whiteboard which color from the grid view, what colors each of the kids are, right? And you can help people or then you can get a pulse of the class really easily. Um, there is more stuff. There is, um, so if I go back, continue, there's calculators built in. There's a graphing calculator, a basic calculator built into the program as well. So you can put that on the board. You can hide all of these tools from the kids as well. If you want them to have a very small subset of the kit tools, you can uh, configure it that way. We have a graphing calculator based on GeoGebra that is built in as well. So you can oh do that. I need to show my son this. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how to use this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to know how to use it. Just know that it's there, right? That's right. <laughs> so I asked a teacher, the teacher who... Uh, asked us he's from Canada and he asked I asked him to show me how would you use it so he gave me a demonstration but then I forgot immediately after that so you don't use it you lose it right <clears throat> and then this is a cool thing we added this last week so we have text boxes for younger kids but now we added the ability for these text boxes to auto correct themselves right so if you want to do auto corrections so for example you have I want to say the answer is A for this one, or the answer is uh, 507 for that other one. You can you can you can right click this guy, right? Um, you can write what? Yeah, you can right click this guy and say add answers and points. So you say the points for the uh, this particular question is five, and uh, the right answer is 507. Right. And similarly, for the other one, you can say that I give you five points for this. The answer is A. So this can be an objective question, for example. right? And you can save it. Let me take out some of the stuff on the book screen so it's easier. So now you see when the kids get it, they can type their answers in. They just type the answers in. right? So they say 508 instead of 507 and A. Right? And yeah. you and the teacher have the ability to go do auto correction on all the boards or a particular student. If the student has finished, you can go see, um, uh, you can click this. I can say only I want to auto correct the student's board because they're done. Right. And you can see that there you go. They got 50%. <laughs> Right. So you you can literally build a self grading quiz. That's correct. You can build a self grading quiz in it, and you can get immediate feedback to the kids, and you can uh, do all of the stuff with it. I think this deserves another bite of chicken tikka masala, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I need. I agree. <laughs> You know, there's something special about rice. It, it just brings me back to my childhood. We grew up eating it. I'll take it in any way, shape, or form. I don't know how you feel, but a good bowl of rice will always make the, the tummy and the soul feel good. 
<laughs> yeah, for me, it's the other way around. I'm from the northern part of India, so we have mostly wheat eaters, right? Uh, rice grows in the south, southern part of India, but like I said, my wife is from Taiwan, so she likes rice more, and I like wheat more. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we eat rice mostly. <laughs> wow! So self, I mean, you can manipulate the toolbar for the students. You could, uh, you know, what I did have a question a little earlier, and I and I, and I uh, didn't ask it because I think I was stuffing my face. But the question is. If I see a student doing something incorrectly on their board, can I lock their board? Yes. You can kind you, of walk them through it? Yes, you can do a lot of stuff. You can lock the whole class. You can lock the, if you're demonstrating something or you're doing a quiz, you can lock a particular page. You can lock individual student boards as well, right? You can lock and lock individual student boards and you can go to this open class board. So you can say lock. So for example, if I lock your board, now you can see on your screen, it'll say, Oh, locked yeah. by teacher, right? Or locked by teacher, and no matter where I click, I can't add my text box. That's right. So that's that. Right? So, yeah. And yeah. So you can do a lot of stuff uh, locking. There are timers built in. So you have, you have timers built in, which can, when they expire, you can set up timers for five minutes, five minutes from now, or five minutes when they start working on the thing. If you're doing asynchronous activities, you can say, I'll give you 10 minutes to finish this work. And the timer automatically starts when they join, right? And when the timer runs out, it auto locks the board. You can configure it to lock it on its own too. So you can do assessments that way as well. Now, there, there is one thing that's confusing me. This is free? <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> you can literally be charging thousands of dollars for this product. Because it, I mean, everything that you've shown and, and discussed, I've heard multiple teachers request for these types of features in other platforms. You know, there's, there, there's multiple platforms out there that are web-based and there's some that are programmed, you know, that they're in, they require an install and a license, obviously. And they do some things really, really well. They do some things okay, and there's a small chunk of things that maybe their product doesn't do at all. Mm -hmm. but yours looks like it does. It it checks all many more boxes, quite possibly than any other whiteboard that I've seen. And not only does it check them, but it does them very, very well. And the fact that it's web-based. Now, you did mention that it works on iPads and iOS devices. Do I need an app or is it just whiteboard.chat? It's just whiteboard.chat. You don't need an app. It works really nicely on the browser. Uh, you can use you can use multiple devices as a teacher too. So if you have an iPad with a pen, you can log into the same whiteboard and use the a stylus on it to write as well, which is super interesting for math teachers too. Wow. Wow. I, I'm... Like my head is processing all this stuff and everything I could be doing with some of my teachers and uh, some of the things that my, our kids' teachers could be doing with our kids as well, because this is, I mean, there's, uh, there's a couple of words that pop out, but I think by far is engaging. This is an, an engaging product. Yeah, that's the intention behind it, just to create more engagement, more fun for the kids. I haven't shown you. Uh, let me show you some more cool stuff. You'll see how it, okay. it keeps going and going, right? So um, let me clear out this stuff. I can just clear my screen. Um, you can, we have a bunch. So let me show you this first. There is a way for kids to add media directly onto their. So if you're doing work on pen, piece of paper and a pen, you can take a photo, right? Right from your webcam, right? And then put it onto the screen, right? Uh, and the kid, teacher can go there and correct that photo. Uh, you can see it in the grid view. You can see what the kids did. You can go and correct it right live, just like if they were using the whiteboard. Wow. And they can record audio. They can record video. The teachers can record audio. Teachers can record video using their um, webcam or microphones and uh, video devices and embed that into the whiteboard as well. So give instructions or have the kids read out paragraphs, all of that 
very easily by just clicking a button. I just stumbled across a music sheet. That's what I was going to show you, right? So, oh, gosh. Right, so we, uh, so my, we have a bunch of grids here. The music sheet is what my uh, kid's piano teacher uses, right? So uh, you can open, we have a palette. So if you click the palette, that has a bunch of stickers, right? So you can open, I think we have over a thousand different type of stickers in here or manipulatives in here. You can open the music one and you can start writing music, right? So music teachers love this platform at all as well because you can finally teach music theory to kids, right? Uh, very easily using this platform as well. If if the usage goes up after this podcast, <laughs> you need to start charging, man. Just <laughs> nine cents, just ninety nine cents a month. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This yeah, so real. So some of the teachers have actually asked us, "Will you be willing to take donations? Can you? Can we pay you something?" We're like, "No, no, it's not." Um, yeah, so we don't want to charge educators. That's not our intention here, right? So, wow, wow. Now you did mention that you have this community of teachers who are always giving feedback, and one of the things that I love about any any ed tech platform, any engagement platform is I love when companies listen to their stockholders, their teachers, their account holders, and they receive input and they make things happen because of the input. You've made over a hundred updates to the system, to your product in the past three months, you said. So it's, I, I'm going to assume that you listen to your teachers, to your community. Where is that community? So, yeah, I think, so actually we are very fortunate that community is on Facebook. It's a group called Teachers Using Whiteboard.chat. Right? Um, it's a private group because um, we started it as a private group, but uh, you anybody can join. It's an open group. We have teachers from all around the world. Uh, they give us feedback all the time. And um, yeah, they are, the one thing that most teachers tell us is this, right? That you guys are unprecedented. They have never seen an educational ed tech company listening to the teachers so much directly, right? Or engaging with the teachers directly and working on the features in a 24 hour, like for example, like this, uh, a teacher yesterday asked us to, we have all currencies from all around the world. We have US currency, um, we have UK currency, we have EU currency. We just added Indian currency because some teacher asked us yesterday and we added it in like 20 minutes. Of course, that's all. because that's what you do. You add it in 20 <laughs> minutes. Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's what, so I think it really, really helps people because it, it really takes us 30 minutes to do it. But then now like maybe 100, 200 kids get benefit out of it the next day, right? They can learn something new, which was not available to them earlier, right? So it's it's really interesting. Yeah, so that, that community is super strong and they interact with each other. Teachers have told us that, hey, we were doing remote learning. We couldn't get to talk to other teachers. This brought it back. So it's really, really yeah, awesome that way too. Wow. And we are super lucky to find them, I would say. Are you guys on social media? Uh, we are, we, again, we are on Twitter and Facebook mainly, right? That's where we are on Instagram as well. Again, if you go to our homepage, uh, whiteboard.chat, you'll find link, links in the top, right? Where you can find us. Okay. All right. So, man, we got a, us teachers, we've got a lot to think about. We've got a lot. I mean, we've seen a lot. We've heard a lot. And not only have we seen a, a lot and heard a lot, but I mean, it's just, Amazing. It really is amazing. And the fact that you're making this free to educators, is just blowing my mind, man. Um, so, but I will say it's because of people like you that these products exist for our students. And whenever I walk into any class, whenever I talk to anyone about anything educational, whether it be pedagogy, whether it be tools, the first thing I think of is our children at home. And this is something that is, I mean, I'm blown away. 
and and not just because I'm eating chicken tikka masala, but because I'm watching what you're doing with that product that you have created. And um, it's amazing, man. So thank you very much, Pawan, for everything that you're doing. Wow. No, th thank you for having me. I think it, it really helps because the more teachers who can find this product, they'll find value in it and hopefully make it better for the whole community of teachers who are using it. So thank you for having me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about this product. Absolutely, absolutely. And for those of you listening, all the information is going to be in the show notes. If you want to hit the website for Whiteboard Chat, it's going to be in there. If you want to connect with them in that Facebook group, that's all going to be there. If you want to watch the video for the podcast that you're listening to, the audio feed, and you know you know you want to watch the actual video with the tutorials that Pawan is, is going through, then it's all going to be there. So don't worry about that. If you're jogging, if you're driving, don't worry about pulling over. All that stuff's going to be in the show notes for you later. Um, I think we owe it to ourselves to have another bite, man. <laughs> And now, mm. hey, this really works talking and eating at the same time. It really does work. Huh? I like your concept of the egg tech bites. <laughs> you know, the best conversations always happen when we break bread with great people. It could be at the table, it could be virtually, it could be in the car on a Bluetooth call or, call or what have you, you know, but it, it's, there's a certain uh, sense of calmness and there's a certain sense of community when we break bread together. And, you know, when we bring people together, especially through food and culture, it's a win-win scenario for everyone. Yep. Yep. I, I see. I think that that's completely true. Awesome. So is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners or the yeah, yeah. Yeah, so okay, let me show you a couple of more things and we'll be done. There are hundred, we do uh, free, free weekly webinars as well on this product. So we actually should do, because we are adding so many new features that it's difficult for teachers to keep up, right? So like we have, so we do webinars. There's more stuff that te teachers can use. I'll show you some cool stuff to interact with the students. Of course, there are these, uh, manipulative math manipulators and stuff like that that you can use we have protractors and blocks number lines whatever have you like the hundreds of them but they, i'll show you some cool stuff what you can do with the chat part of whiteboard.chat right so you can have a one-on-one -on -one chat right so you can uh, you can select your recipients like who you want to chat with but the really cool thing about this chat is that first of all it is many to one whatever the kids type only goes to the teacher and then whatever the uh, students type only goes back to the teacher. But the really cool part that is here is you can actually, if you don't speak the same language, so we can select the chat oh, language. No, right? no, no. So, so for example, if the student speaks only Spanish, right, they can select, set their language to Spanish, right? And whatever the teacher types from that point onwards. So each student can pick their own language, right? So you can see, you can see the student on the right has picked Spanish. And when the teacher says, oh, you, right? It will translate it live to them in their language and vice versa, right? So when the teacher and the student types, it will translate that back to the teacher's language. So each recipient can pick their language. So if you have English language learners, or if you're interacting with students who speak a different language, it makes it super easy, right? So it's super interesting. So, <laughs> so JBL, you can, if you change your language, you'll have to refresh your board so for it to take effect, right? So I, I did change my language. Oh my gosh, it changed everything without me having to do anything. Okay, so now on it, it is live, right? What? Oh. So, so now if I type something, it will translate live to you, right? <laughs> oh, man. I would pay $100 a month for this product. <laughs> we, we don't want educators' money. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. Wow. You, you did mention a little earlier that you do have teacher webinars, right? Yes, we do. The webinars. Okay. How can people um, uh, sign up for them? So just go to whiteboard.chat and then right on the homepage, you can see there's a banner which says that there's a free live webinar on January 21st right now. And you can see we do twice a day on the on Wednesday on Thursdays. So we do Pacific 4 p.m. and Pacific Eastern 4 p.m. as well. Well, I'll be there this Thursday. <laughs> I will be there this Thursday, and I'm probably going to be eating something as well. So, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think this Thursday is the basics one. Maybe you want to do the week after because that has advanced features. We show how you can do group games, how you can play bingo with whiteboard dot chat. It's it's super interesting. Right? Oh gosh. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, you heard it, you've seen it. Go try it out. Whiteboard.chat from any browser on any device. And you did say students don't need students don't need accounts, right? Yeah, students don't need accounts. And the only reason a teacher would need an account would be to save progress on boards. That's right. So they can all the work that the teacher is doing as well as the student is doing get saved automatically into the cloud. Right, with the teacher. So if they're asynchronously working on it, it gets saved. The teachers can go back and take a look at whatever work they did. We also have teachers uh, contributing community boards here. So we have about 100 community boards across grade levels, which teachers have shared for free. So you can go take a look and see what other teachers have done. And for that also, you need the account. Wow. All right. Well, I'm as soon as we end this call, I'm going to go start playing around and, and uh, show off to my wife everything that I found. That way she can she can also uh, show this to her teacher. So I can't thank you enough for your work, your con your contributions to the ed tech world and what you're doing. Um, your company is going to go nowhere but up. And I know that you say you don't want to charge people for this. But man, just just a dollar a month, man, you guys <laughs> clean up. Man, well, thank you very much, Pawana. Uh, Pawana. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you're doing. Um, I love the fact that you forced me to cook Indian food, and I did it, and I, I think I did it pretty well, man. I think I did it pretty well. All right. Thank you so much again for having me, Gabriel, and thank you for having made chicken tikka masala with me. That's awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And one of these days, we will meet in person, and we will, we'll, we will be able to break bread in person, right? Yes, yes, we will. Right by the time, maybe we we'll have a million odd users using this platform yeah, yeah. after yeah. listening to your podcast. <laughs> Hopefully, well, you have a great evening. You too. Bye bye.